So back in the late 90s, the Game Boy was undoubtedly the king of handheld consoles. If you were a kid back then and didn't have one of these, you were begging your parents to get you one, especially after the release of the first generation Pokemon games. But in 1998, Nintendo did something a little unorthodox with the release of the Game Boy Camera and the Game Boy Printer, accessories that turned this console into somewhat of a content creation machine, even if it was in a very limited sense. So today we're going to crack these things open and see how well they hold up over two decades later. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So when I started working on this episode I had a bit of a crazy thought. This thing right here could have been a lot of people's first ever experience with digital photography. Now it certainly wasn't the first digital camera by any means. In fact it wasn't even that great at taking photos. Actually, that's a bit of an understatement. It was pretty bad at taking photos, even by 1998 standards, because the images produced by the Game Boy Camera measured in at 128 by 112 pixels, it could only shoot in grayscale, and it could store 30 photos on its internal memory. But comparing this to a mainstream consumer digital camera from the time isn't fair at all, because this thing was far more of a toy instead of a serious digital camera, and that's pretty evident in the price. While you'd easily spend a few hundred hundred or even a few thousand dollars depending on what grade of camera you were looking at to get a consumer digital camera, the Game Boy camera sold for just $49.95 here in the US when it was released in June of 1998. It came in four colors, the red variant that I have here, along with green, yellow, and blue, though there was also a special edition Zelda Ocarina of Time gold version that you could get by mail order if you subscribe to Nintendo Power Magazine. The printer sold for $10 more, and as per usual, Japan got dibs on both of these first as they were released in February over there where they were known as the pocket camera and pocket printer. Now in terms of hardware there's really nothing that makes these any different from their North American counterparts although Japan did get an exclusive color. This right here is the clear purple variant of the Game Boy camera which I was able to get all thanks to today's video sponsor Baiyi. They're a proxy service that lets you buy things from a massive amount of Japanese-only sites, even those that don't normally ship internationally. And trust me, I would know because I've been using them for years now to get things from Yahoo Auctions, long before they even considered sponsoring me. In fact, every single thing I've imported from Japan to make a video on has been purchased through them. Because they make it really easy. Whenever you buy something, it'll be sent to Baiyi's warehouse, where you can have it inspected to make sure that it is as the listing described. You can also consider consolidate separate items into a single package to save on shipping costs. And you can do it all without knowing a single word of Japanese, as both the site and their customer support are available in English. Plus, you won't be shocked with surprise charges when you get to the checkout page, as their service fees are reasonable and transparent. So if you've been wanting to get some cool Japanese tech to add to your collection, sign up with Baiyi today by clicking the link below to get 10% off your first purchase. And huge thanks again to Baiyi for making this video possible. So we're going to focus on the Game Boy Camera for this first portion of the video, and I'll briefly show you around the box here. You did get a manual inside that, you know, tells you how to use the thing. Of course, this is all in Japanese, and that's why I actually had to buy a North American version of the Game Boy Camera anyways, because all the menus and everything on this thing are in Japanese, and I figured you guys didn't want to sit through having me use Google Translate every two seconds. So, yeah, this is going to make it a lot easier to just go through this thing and see what we can do with it. But yeah, so on the back of this box here, I just want to briefly highlight, they do mention the Game Boy printer, because the Game Boy printer was really designed for use with the Game Boy camera. There are a, a few other games that you can use it with, but it was really meant to go kind of hand in hand with the camera to print out the photos that you take with this. And staying true to that, on the back of the Game Boy printer box, you see we have a mention of the Game Boy camera. So I figured we'd just go ahead and open up this box since we've got it here. Uh, so you can see what you would have received with it, which of course is going to be a manual and the Game Boy printer itself. Now this thing, keeping with the whole portable theme of the Game Boy, does not have any sort of external AC adapter. It is only powered by six, yeah that's right, six AA batteries. This thing was an absolute battery hog. Yeah, I bet that's gonna bug some people, isn't it? But yeah, the way 
this worked is you would use the Game Boy's link cable, I've got one of those right here, to connect this up to your Game Boy and you would pop in a reel of thermal paper that they sold. It came in three different colors, you see on the back here you can see a little bit of a better view of it. And uh, that way there was no ink cartridge to change out in this thing. So yeah, uh, we're going to set this aside for now uh, and I'll come back to it a little bit later on in the video. For now let's go ahead and pop in the Game Boy camera to my Game Boy Color here and we'll see what we can do with it. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to highlight how well that the purple pocket camera goes with the clear purple Game Boy Color. I mean, it is really, really satisfying to look at. Of course, it's the same plastic and everything, so that's why it, it fits really well. Uh, so much so that I actually decided to swap out the PCB on this thing. So I've got the American PCB in here from the red one that I showed earlier. So yeah, we're going to be using this for the rest of this video. And uh, just to show you if you were curious here is what the inside of a Game Boy camera looks like so you've got your PCB the camera plugs into the PCB and it all gets enclosed in the housing now like I mentioned earlier the Game Boy camera does predate the Game Boy color by a few months but Japan did get a translucent purple Game Boy pocket that was exclusive to them uh, so that's kind of what this was meant to go along with but they use the same plastic on all three of these so everything just fits together really nicely uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and power this on. Now I have to say, I really think that the menu that comes up here just sets up the, the whole vibe of this thing really well because, uh, like I said, this is more of a toy than anything else. It's not really meant to be taken seriously. So Nintendo has kind of designed the menu and interface and everything to be fun and kind of lively. There's also some mini games in here that make reference to older Nintendo titles. And yeah, so you've got Shoot, View, and Play on the main menu here. We're just going to go to the Shoot mode first. Uh, this is where you're going to, you know, take photos, obviously. And then you have a bunch of, like, sub-options here. Um, so, you see you got, like, Items, Magic, you've got Check and Run. We're going to go into Shoot first, and this will just bring up the camera interface. So, um, with the way I've got this position, you can just see, like, my camera. So, here's my hand waving in front of the camera. Now, with the way the camera is designed, you can take a selfie of yourself, dare I say, uh, or you can rotate the camera lens around 180 degrees to take a photo of somebody or something else. So I've got Eddie over here. I'm going to snap a photo of him really quickly. And here's how that looks. So, yeah, you can see the quality is not so great. Uh, you, you do have some contrast and brightness controls. Uh, you can adjust that as you're, you know, taking the photo. You can't do anything now, obviously. Uh, but we're going to hit A to save that. And uh, just to show you if I'll, uh, I'll uh, bring this back so it's um, facing upwards. And we'll kind of move the contrast. We can make the brightness, like, super bright to where you can barely see uh, my camera there and we'll take a photo of that and save that why not and uh, yeah so that's kind of the main functionality of this but like I said you've got a bunch of other stuff in here too so under items this is where you've got self timer and time lapse uh, both are pretty self-explanatory but it's nice that they were included in here so we'll jump into self timer you can set a timer all the way up to uh, 25 seconds and we'll maybe make this I don't know five seconds why not and we'll hit begin and you hit A, it starts counting down, and I can, I don't know, maybe just position the lens from the, uh, or the, you know, the actual camera portion from the other Game Boy camera. You can just move it up in front of the camera there, and there you go. And maybe we'll save that photo, and yeah, that's the, that's the timer. We've also got the time lapse, which I think this is pretty neat just to have on here. So you can set a time interval. Uh, all the way up to an hour, I think. Yeah, so 60 minutes, and it just takes a photo uh, at whatever time interval, you know, like a like a time lapse function does. It tells you how many exposures or you know how many shots that you have left. So maybe we'll make this, I don't know, an interval of five seconds, and we'll just do uh, three exposures. So we hit begin, and then we hit start, and it will start counting down. So it took the first photo there and it'll take the second one after five seconds, and then the third one after another five seconds. It also keeps track of how many shots that you have left remaining uh, on your you know, internal storage here. Uh, like I said, it stores up to 30, so I have taken some photos like off camera uh, just to kind of get some different lighting conditions and everything. Um, so yeah, that's that. Magic, you've got a bunch of just cool kind of quirky stuff. So trick lenses, these are kind of like those goofy Logitech webcam filters. So maybe we wanna, I don't know, we could set this one here. 
And now if I, uh, you know, bring something in front of the camera, you can see it's uh, doing that whole effect there. Like you, you guys have probably seen this before on a bunch of stuff. You've got under montage here, uh, we can set, I don't know, let's do uh, lens one here. So this, like, I can take a photo and then I can just move the camera around so you can see how it keeps the uh, first one in place. Let me maybe uh, take another shot of Eddie here. There you go, we'll save that one and go back. Under panorama, you've got uh, two different modes you can do here. You can set the lens to taller or wide, the print to taller or wide. We'll get to the printing in a minute here. But yeah, so maybe you want to set lens to tall. And now you just, you know, take a photo, you save that. And then that's the the first frame in the panorama and you know you have to be kind of precise if you want this to show up properly i'm not doing this right at all and last but not least you've got game face which is just a little mini game that they've got in here so i already have a photo taken of eddie actually so this might look familiar to you if you've played uh the old game and watch games because uh, yeah this is ball so just with you know whatever photo you've taken as the character's face so the way this works, if we hit start here to get out of this, um, if you go into shoot, you're supposed to take four different photos of you doing like different expressions. Uh, of course, it doesn't really work well with Eddie there because uh, he's just, you know, Eddie. Uh, but, you know, as you go around here, it will change and swap in between those four photos. Um, you can also, if we go back here, we can go to doodle and just doodle over the photos. You kind of got this creepy looking uh, Luigi <laughs> face here. So we can go to paint here, and maybe we want to just, I don't know, just draw over this first one here. It's not really that easy to draw uh, with the D-pad here, like and make a, you know, circle. I'm kind of trying to do that. But yeah, so there's, you know, <laughs> there's our first photo of Eddie. So we can hit B here, and we can save that. And we'll exit and now if we go back to well actually let's go to stamp here so you got a bunch of stamps you can choose from i think if you hit start it, yeah it swaps uh or it brings up this little menu here so we can you know add a stamp to maybe this one there we go and we'll bring that back up and maybe add these lips here to eddie over here uh yeah have them off center like that and uh yeah so we'll save that and we'll exit and then if we go back to the to the game here, it's gonna be all just messed up, uh, which is which is super funny, of course. But yeah, so I, I think it's cool how um, the Game and Watch is referenced a couple times throughout the uh, Game Boy Camera software here, which I think is is pretty cool. So yeah, we'll hit start here, and oh, we just lost there. Uh, that's unfortunate. And yeah, so you get there's kind of these goofy screens too, so we can hit A to go again or hit B for enough to go back. And um, yeah, so that's everything under magic. You also have check, which allows you to view your different photos. Now there is also that separate view mode, but this kind of just gives you like a nice uh, sneak peek if you want to, you know, take a photo and quickly see uh, how it how it turned out. So here's all these photos that I've just taken. Uh, here's that one of Eddie. Um, I've also got like here's a photo. This is actually a uh, panorama I did off camera of my floppy wall. At least I try to anyway. So it does show up as like different images and I've got an old uh, rotary phone. So yeah, we'll, we'll just, uh, you know, this kind of is like just lost footage, honestly, the way this is later, like a duck hunt poster, just random images that have no context. Uh, but yeah, and then you have a run, which is just, this is just frankly bizarre. Um, you hit A here and Every so often you'll get this, who are you running from text? And you've got a face here, which does change every so often. And that's literally all it is. Like there's no, like there's nothing else. This is the main screen that you get most of the time. It says, you're now crossing the equator. Like, okay. Uh, then you go back and you go and do it again. And you might get that screen again. You might get one of those, who are you running from? It's just really bizarre. I don't know why, it, why it's in here. Uh, here's here's another one. Who are you running from with this guy's face? Like, okay, Nintendo, but that that's literally all that option does. So that's everything in the shoot menu. Next up, we got to go to the view menu, which we're only going to be in here for a little bit, actually, because to configure some of these options, we have to go back to the main menu, and I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. So album, we're going to come back to. This is where you can just view your photos. But you also have this show menu. Which, uh, you know, it seems at first like these are kind of the same thing, but show contains all these like additional options. So first up, you've got a slideshow, 
which is pretty self-explanatory. I know I've said that like 20 times so far throughout this video, but a lot of these options just, you know, they, they do what they say, uh, which is great. So yeah, the slideshow, you can, you're gonna hit A here to roll it and it will just uh, go through your photos. There is, if we go back here, um, we can hit the select button. Select, by the way, is how you, if there are any options to configure, it's usually 99% of the time how you're going to access those. So in this case, we hit select, we get options for background music, we can change between these two here, or you can go to shuffle down here and turn that on to have it randomly go through your photos. So we'll hit A, and now it will not start from the very beginning. So there you go. Now, these other two options, animation and hotspots, by default will not do anything. If you go to animation here, you'll get access to this menu, but you won't be able to view the animation because you haven't created one. And to create one and to mess with the hotspot settings, you have to go back to the main menu and hit the select button which will bring up this sort of hidden options menu. So you've got link, doodle, edit, and special. Uh, we'll just briefly go through these. Link is where you get access to your printing and transfer functions. Uh, though you could also just do this by going into the view menu, selecting a photo, you can just print it from there. Uh, that's the other thing about the Game Boy Camera, there are like multiple ways to do a lot of this stuff. In fact, uh, this doodle menu right here will look familiar. This is that same menu we were in before, where you can stamp and paint over images. Uh, so you've got that uh, accessible from here too. Edit is where you get access to your album to delete stuff, which you can just, again, do from inside the view menu. And here is where you can create your animation. Now, I already kind of started doing this, um, but basically what you do is uh, you just go through frame by frame and you can pop in photos. Uh, so if I hold down the A button here, I can scroll through all my photos here. And, you know, I could select one, maybe we want, um, now you see some of these, you might be like, oh, wait a second, what are all these other photos that I didn't show you guys before? Well, there is an entirely separate album in here, that's known as the B album, and this is just a bunch of, like, extra stuff that Nintendo included on here. Uh, now, not all of these are accessible by default. You have to actually go into some of the mini games that are in here and do certain things to unlock all of the images. Uh, but the A album, which if I go down here, these are all the photos that I've taken. So I maybe want to select that one. We can drop that onto there. Maybe we want, I don't know, this cool looking photo of Mario. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff in here to mess around with, and then you can change the animation speed. If we go up here, hold down A, we can change the play speed. And yeah, once you, you've got it all to your liking, you would hit B here, we're gonna save it, and we'll exit out of it. And then if we were to go back into the view menu, and go into show, and animation, now if we hit A, it'll just uh, go through that animation for us. So, there it is, pretty cool, right? Uh, so yeah, and it's the same thing with Hotspot. If we go all the way back again, and um, hit select, uh, I believe that's over here in the special menu. So this is Hotspot. What this is, is you would just select a photo. So let's choose this rotary phone one here. And you can add these little, well, hotspots to the photo. So maybe I want this to be right in the center of the dial here. And you can make them do certain things, play sound effects. Uh, you can make it do like a visual effect. You can also have it jump to a separate image. So maybe we want to jump to the second image there. Um, we can hit that and hit OK. And then if we if we go back and save that and exit out of it, we have to again go all the way back into the into the view menu. So they, they really have separated these options uh, for whatever reason. But yeah, we go in here and then I select this photo. And now if I were to move my cursor over there and hit A, it will uh, play the visual effect, play the sound effect and jump to the different photo. So that's basically what you can do with that. And you see um, if we hop all the way back over here again, um, there are, yeah, you got five different hot spots that you can do uh, per photo. Also in this menu, we've got Compose, which allows you to make uh, essentially composites of existing images. So the split option here is kind of, well, it's exactly that same uh, lens that we took a look at earlier when you could take four separate photos and it would stitch them all together in the corners like this. You can do that same thing from existing photos. So if I want to select this one here, uh, these are going to be really great together, I'm sure. Uh, I can go around and just, you know, make that. So there you go. Uh, and then if you hit begin, this will allow you to save that photo if you want. Now fusion, this one you can like, well, fuse two images together. So let me choose maybe the typewriter here 
and we'll get the uh, the rotary phone and you hit begin you can see it's kind of this like cross fading effect going on so yeah why don't we save that one why not so yeah that's what uh, what the compose option does and down here under edit well we were just there uh, yeah that's that's this entire menu uh, next up down here is play which is appropriately where the mini games are uh, so the first one is space fever 2 which is actually the sequel to Nintendo's 1979 arcade game called, well, Space Fever. And this is it I just uh, lost here, uh, but you know, you're you're shooting ships and yeah, that's that's how you play the game, you try to get the high score. But you see you also have these two ships that like come down and hover uh, for a moment before all these smaller ships start to start to come in. That's actually how you access the additional mini games that are available on here. So we'll let it start up again here. If I shoot the left ship here, the ship with the B on it, it brings you to this screen for ball. So you can choose the background music. You've got two options there. And then for face, you've got three. The question mark will be your custom one that, you know, we did this before, uh, but you have those two other options. So maybe we want to hit, I don't know, number one here and you get this dude and, and yeah it's it's ball on here so that's another way you can get access to that um so we'll hit back here and we'll jump into space fever 2 again and hit the uh second one over here the d ship this actually is not a game this is a literal sort of music synthesizer built into the game boy camera which is yeah it sounds kind of nuts right but that's that's literally what this is we can go to new here and um, you've got, again, an option for the face here. We'll choose the question mark so we get uh, my Eddie lovely photos there uh, on, our, on our DJ. But yeah, so if you hit select, you get access to this menu here with all these options. And this is rather limited. You can only make uh, 16 notes on this track and then it just loops. Um, so, you know, it is pretty limited for a synthesizer, but it, it's kind of impressive to have on a Game Boy, not just a Game Boy, but a mini game, sort of a, a sub function of the Game Boy camera. Like I would not have expected them to include this at all. There's literally no reason to. So what you do is you uh, hold A on the first note here and you can select whichever note that you want. So maybe we just want to do like a, you know, slowly increasing tone and you can hear it starts like looping in the background, by the way. We can change uh, how many notes that it plays. So if I want it to only play the notes that I've done, There you go. So we can move it to seven, six. We can just make it repeat the first note over and over again. Uh, if I can actually... Oh, I guess you can't actually. You cannot go down to just one. Uh, so, yeah. We're going to make it on seven there. You've got uh, some other options up here. You can hit select to get to your second soundtrack. And then you have a noise track. So you've got three tracks that you can mess around with. And, um, yeah. When you have everything chosen and, you know, made up how you want, you just hit B to go back. And... Then from this, you can kind of like act like a DJ. You can increase the tempo, so we can make this like super crazy. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, and then you've got, you know, your, your, your track options here if you want your um, first track to fade in or out. Um, we don't have anything on, the, on these other tracks right now, but if we go back, uh, I'm not going to bother saving that. There is a, uh, or there, there are actually a few samples in here. If we go to sample, and let's get, I don't know, the, the second one, why not? So yeah, now we got a lot more to work with. So we can up the tempo maybe again. And maybe we want to turn off the second track. And then you also have just a bunch of sound effects that you can add like at random points. So <laughs> there's that. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely want to save that and we'll we'll call it quits. There is also a fourth mini game though called Run Run Run. Um, perhaps that's a reference to the uh, run option in the in, in the shoot menu here, or vice versa. But uh, yeah, this is a a mini game that has to be unlocked by getting a high score of 2,000 in Space Fever 2. Uh, so you have to play this game for a while, get to that score, and then you would get another ship, actually this uh, question mark ship you see here. Um, that will become available, you can shoot that and then get access to that game. Um, and we also have, from the main menu here, you can hit start, and it does this cool effect, uh, and it brings you to this sort of galaxy looking menu. And this is where you can change your username if you want to. Uh, I actually haven't even configured this, let's put in um, MJD, why not? 
so we'll put MJD as the username. You can put your birth date if you want to. Uh, we'll just go to end here. And uh, can we... Okay, so it looks like we can just bypass all this. That's nice. You don't have to enter in everything if you don't want to. You've got an ID there. Uh, so, you know, this is your, I guess, unique uh, Game Boy camera hardware ID, uh, I would imagine. Record tells you a bunch of stats. Um, under high score here, it tells you your high score. And see, there is run, run, run. So it does, uh, you, you can see that high score even though uh, we don't have access to the game currently. Uh, so that would let you know that there is another game if you didn't already know that. And last but not least, we have credits, which is probably the coolest credit sequence that you'll see because it's literally just this guy dancing. Uh, there aren't any credits at all, at least by default. Uh, to get access to the full credits, you have to beat Run Run Run, that fourth minigame, in 22 seconds or less. So you have to, like, do two Easter eggs to get access to the to the full credits. Um, which seems kind of like that should be in reverse, like the full credits should be accessible by default and this be the Easter egg. Um, but... Either way, everybody seems to think that the guy dancing here is Shigeru Miyamoto. That's the general consensus if you look this up online. The interesting thing, though, is that has never been confirmed for sure. It's kind of hard to tell because, you know, this image quality is kind of poor. Uh, so we can't really tell if it's him or not. But that is what everybody seems to believe. And it's just kind of become a fun fact, did you know thing, even though, uh, well, we don't actually know if that's true. And that's everything inside the start menu. Now, last but not least, truly last but not least, going into view here, going into album, this is where you can view your photos. And then if we hit select, we get all of these uh, additional options. And you see that we've got uh, print in here as well. You've also got, you can paint, you can put a stamp on it, you can change the frame, you can put a, a comment on it if you want to. And uh, you can also just delete the image from here. So this is a perfect segue into the Game Boy printer because, yeah, we are going to print a few of these photos. But before we do that, let me uh, put the camera aside for now and um, we'll get this Game Boy Pocket printer set up and ready to go. So what do you call a printer with no paper? A paperweight. Yeah, that's a really original joke, I'm sure. And yeah, the thing about thermal paper is it does have a bit of an expiration date. Even though this is brand new, like these uh, rolls here have never been used before. This is a new old stock package that I got off of eBay. Uh, we'll just open it up here. This does contain all of the three colors, uh, which is white, blue, and yellow. Um, but... Like I mentioned, there's a good chance these are probably not going to uh, print, um, at least at their uh, original quality because of how old they are. So I did purchase uh, some third party paper that we'll uh, try in a minute here if uh, these do not work. But basically what you do is we're just gonna open one of these rolls here and we're going to uh, pop it into the printer. And we're just going to, uh, I guess, peel this back like so, take this sticker off, and um, I guess we can probably just tear this here. And then we just put that into the slot there. That seems to be all the way in. So now if we turn it on, it should grab it. It's what we at feed here. Yep, I can feel it pulling the paper in. So we'll just hold this until we uh, start to get a little coming out the top. There we go. And we'll just uh, tear that excess off. And we're all good to go. Now, there is a way that you can test the paper without even printing anything from the Game Boy. And that is by holding down the feed button and then turning it on. And it'll print a little test. So let's see how this shows up. And yeah, check that out. You can see that looks super faded. You can barely see that. Like I suspected, this paper is uh, just super old and its quality has uh, degraded over the years. But we'll try to print something with it anyways. So let me hook up the link cable here. So let's bring our Game Boy and Game Boy camera back in here. And um, another cool Easter egg, by the way, just completely off topic here. On the main menu here, on the start screen, if you hold up on the D-pad, Mario will dance faster. If you hold down, he will dance slower. So yeah, it's kind of a neat thing that they included. But we go in here to view, and we'll go to our album and pick on. Let's do this typewriter one, why not? So we select that, we will uh, hit select here, go up to print, and we will print.
And there goes the printer. And there you go. So we'll go ahead and tear this off here. And yeah, you can see how faded that that is. You can barely see it at all. I mean, I can make out Nintendo, Game Boy. I mean, you can, you can faintly see it, but uh, just not really well. The cool thing about this paper is uh, it actually doubles as a sticker. Uh, so you can peel this back. And there's that little uh, tear that you can tear off. And now uh, if I just do this... Yeah, that's sticker paper. It is actually barely sticky at all. Um, that does not, that ain't gonna stick to anything. Yeah, like I said, this paper is, you know, it's over two decades old, so you can't expect it to work um, like it did on day one. But I did find some replacement paper. Uh, this, I believe, is for a uh, receipt printer, like for a cash register. Um, it is the same size, uh, I mean, not like, in terms of how much paper is on here, but the width of it is the same size as the Game Boy uh, printer paper. Uh, so one roll of this should uh, fit in here. And I, I will leave a, a link to where I got this from. I picked it up off of Amazon for like 15 bucks. This was the smallest. I only needed one of these. This was the smallest that I could get. Huh. We got nothing. Uh, I wonder if we got to put the paper in the other way. Okay. Um... I'm starting to think this isn't actually thermal paper. Well, it looks like I should have checked the reviews because this thing, even though it was advertised as thermal paper in the listing title on Amazon, it ain't thermal paper. This other guy here gave it a one star. This guy apparently thought it was great, but uh, this recent review also says it's not thermal paper. So yeah, it's just not thermal paper. That's just straight up false advertising. All right, one trip to Walmart later and I got some actual thermal paper this time, so that's great. Now these rolls, you, you might be able to tell, are a little bit uh, too big for the Game Boy printer, but luckily we can just cut them to the right size, which I've done with this strip here. But if you planned on using this a lot for whatever reason and didn't want to have to cut like this entire roll down to size, a lot of people recommend getting this thermal paper from Psycho. It is the exact same size as the original Game Boy thermal paper, uh, which is great. So there you go, doesn't that look a lot better? So let's get the Game Boy turned on and do some printing. And um, while that's booting up, let me just show you that I did uh, do that same print on the other two rolls of original thermal paper. And you can see it actually shows up a little better on the blue and yellow ones here. Not much better, but you know, it is noticeably better than the uh, white one. So uh, yeah, we'll just set those aside. I mean, still we're gonna get a much better print with this paper. Oh yeah, that looks a lot better. Yeah, you can see that is that is much better. We'll also compare it to the yellow one here. I mean, still, the, the quality of the print, it is super tiny. It's actually around the size of a postage stamp, uh, just to give you like a, a size comparison there. But like I mentioned, there are a few other cartridges uh, that support the Game Boy printer functionality. And one of those is Pokemon Gold and Silver. One of the things you could do is print uh, Pokedex entries, which I think is pretty neat. Um, I never did this back when I played Pokemon Gold. Uh, we're going to have to reseat that cartridge, aren't we? Because uh, I did not have a Game Boy printer or a camera back then. Uh, it's been so long. Actually, to be honest, it hasn't been because I, I, I did have to create a new save file. Oh my gosh, it got rid of my save file. Are you... Okay. <laughs> I just can't get a break, can I? Now I gotta go through this whole, because you have to get to the point where you actually get the Pokedex to be able to, to print entries from it. So yeah, the save battery's dead in this thing. That's lovely. Okay, after encountering like every Pokemon in the game in the grass on the way over here, um, I now have the Pokedex and uh, I'm not gonna turn the game console off because uh, I gotta change out the save battery. It did save this game before, like I got to this point I saved the game, turned it off, turned it back on, and it showed that it had a saved game. So, uh, yeah, it just, you know, saved battery, went bad. Uh, but, anyways, so we get out here, um, let's just head back. Actually, we can just do it right from here, can't we? So we'll hit start, we'll go to our Pokedex, 
And of course, the only thing I knew was going to be Cyndaquil because this is the Pokemon that I selected. So we can go to Cyndaquil's Pokedex entry and go all the way over to Prince. And there we go. Now this one, it, it does have to transmit a few times because it prints like the first portion of it and then it's got to continue with the second. It might do this two or three times. Looks like two times. So there you go. So we'll peel this off. We'll see how well we can read this. Yeah, it says it is timid and always curls itself up in a ball. If attacked, it flares up its back for protection. So, yeah, it's a pretty cool way to get kind of a physical representation of the uh, Pokemon that you've encountered in the game. Yeah, so um, those are a couple of the things you can use with the Game Boy printer, and that is the Game Boy printer and the Game Boy camera. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool accessories for the Game Boy, especially the camera. I mean, the amount of stuff on here is kind of nuts. I did not expect it to have all of those extra, you know, goodies and kind of Easter eggs on here. Uh, so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. I want to give a huge thank you again to Bayi for sponsoring and allowing me to purchase this stuff to, to show you guys. And, of course, a huge thank you to all of you for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.